Mr. President, I would like to call up Rubio Amendment number 651 and ask for its immediate consideration. Clerk will report. The Senator from Florida, Mr. Rubio, proposes an amendment number 651 to amendment number 633. On page 5 of the amendment, between lines 6 and 7, insert the following. Section 212, requirement that to be eligible for trade adjustment assistance, workers be laid off because of imports from or a shift in production to a country which the United States has a free trade agreement Mr. in President? effect. Mr. President. A senator from Florida. I ask that further reading of the amendment be dispensed. Without objection, so ordered. Thank you, Mr. President and members. I, I wanted to, we've had this important conversation this week about trade policy in the United States. It's a very important one. Uh, clearly, I think one of the great things that will help us grow our economy in the years to come is, is further free trade. And as we have these pending free trade agreements, which most everyone around here I've run into says they're in favor of, including the president, the one with Korea, South Korea, the one with uh, Panama, the one with Colombia, uh, there's been a prerequisite put in place by those in charge here in this chamber, and that is that we deal with the, the TAA issues. And so that's why we're on this issue today. They've clearly been linked, the issue of free trade and the issue of this TAA um, Law. And so that's why we're on that today. On, and on that line, and let me talk a little bit about these free trade agreements for a minute because we're continuing to wait for them to be sent down to us. Uh, these agreements would increase U.S. exports by billions of dollars and, and creating jobs here in the United States. And uh, about you know, the numbers that are out there, exports of about $12 billion annually, for example, adding about $14 billion to the U.S. economy. These are real numbers. The South Korea agreement alone, for example, is estimated could add as many as 70,000 American jobs. As I said earlier, these benefits are not being realized because the President has not yet submitted these for approval to this body or, or to the Congress. And so the debate we're having today is really not a new one. In fact, the, the Trade Adjustment Agreement, or TAA, has been a policy of the United States for better or for worse uh, since the Trade Expansion Act of 1962. Um, interestingly, this policy was first actually proposed by Senator John F. Kennedy when he introduced Lee and he aptly titled it the Trade Adjustment Act. In fact, the, the initial goal was to respond to proceeds, perceived effects of trade policy. In essence, you enter into a trade policy like a free trade agreement with another country. American workers may lose their job in the short term, but you create a fund to help them transition to what you hope will be the new jobs being created by free trade. As you create this new uh, relationship with new countries and new economies, the effect of it, and quite frankly it has been the effect, is that while some jobs may be lost, those jobs are replaced with new opportunities and new jobs. And in the process of that transition between the job you once had and the job you hope to have here in the future as a product of free trade, you create this fund to help workers adjust from point A to point B. That was the purpose of it, and that has been the purpose of it. And that's why it's been included in things like the Trade Act of 1974. It was ushered in with the North American Free Trade Agreement under President Clinton. It was also included in the Trade Act of 2002, the last authorization of the Trade Promotion Authority so vital to promoting the free trade policies in the United States. So from its very inception, TAA has been linked to free trade, to basically a, a, an understanding that when you enter into free trade agreements with another country, there are short-term disruptions and you need to have a fund available to help workers transition during that disruption. Very simply put, you have a job, maybe it goes overseas in the free trade agreement, but a new job is created in America as a result of that agreement, and we're going to help you transition there through this fund. That was always the purpose of it until 2009, when under the stimulus bill, that was changed and has been vastly expanded. And now basically, in order to qualify for it, all you need to prove is that somehow your job or the company you work for has now moved operations potentially overseas. And look, that's a big problem in America. It's a big problem in Florida. You go and you talk to people and they'll tell you, we're losing our jobs, other countries are taking our jobs, we're having jobs going overseas. There's a lot of reasons for that. The first is unfair trade practices, and this body should address that, beginning with China, but other nations that unfairly uh, deal with the United States, whether it's manipulation of their currency, whether it's dumping, whether it's all sorts of things that they do in those countries that are unfair. Not to mention the fact that some of these nations have absolutely no environmental regulations, no protections for their workers, their wages, incredible amounts of, of headwinds that we face with regard to that. And that should be dealt with, should be dealt with seriously through public policy, and it's something that we should look at. But that is not a temporary issue. That is a permanent thing. That is something that's ingrained and entrenched. And unless we deal with the issues involved in that and those unfair trade practices, no temporary measure like TAA is going to help us with that. We have to deal with that on a permanent basis. That was not the purpose of the TAA. The second thing that we need to deal with is some of the impediments we're creating ourselves. 
That's why I'm always encouraged when I hear bipartisan talk of tax reform, for example, things that will make it easier for people to build things in the United States and open businesses here, regulatory reform. Let there be no doubt that while there are significant and uh, currency manipulation problems and significant trade impediments in terms of unfair trade practices by other countries. Some of the wounds are self-inflicted through a regulatory and a tax code that makes it difficult for people to do things, do business in the United States. And again, I'm always encouraged when I hear bipartisan talk of both regulatory reform and tax reform because these are the kinds of things that can deal permanently with a permanent and entrenched problem. But that's not the purpose of TAA. And especially today as we stand here considering this as a gateway issue where we have been told that the reason why we have to pass this bill first before we can get on the free trade agreements and so clearly links the two. And if we're going to link the two, then we have to make it very clear that this sort of assistance existed and was created for the defined purpose and the specific purpose of helping people who, to transition because of a disruption created in their job status as a result of a free trade agreement. So this is a pretty simple amendment. What it does is it basically says that this assistance is only available to those workers who lose their jobs to a country that we have a free trade, trade agreement with, with because this is, this is designed to deal with the unintended consequences and the disruptions, the short-term disruptions, the temporary disruptions that might be created by a, uh, a free trade agreement with another country. So that's what the amendment does, and, and I'm hoping to have the support uh, of as many of our colleagues as possible in putting uh, this program back into its uh, historical purpose. Uh, with that, Mr. President, I yield the floor.